Because I noticed the new logo on the backdrop uh, behind you. Can you tell us what that's, that's about? Yeah, look, it's really exciting um, you know, to have for the first time we've come on board with Coinjar, which is a cryptocurrency exchange, and um, we're really excited by having them on board. I think this is the first uh, club that's been involved in, in crypto, and um, I think it just shows where the, the club's at from an innovation and creativity perspective, and you know, we're just wrapped to partner with Coinjar. Jack Briney today didn't do too much with the main group while we were there. Is he okay? Yeah, look, he's fine. He's, he's not going to play this week. Um, and he's really reloading his foot. So it really is a week-by-week week proposition. He certainly won't play this week. Um, not sure about next week, but every step that he takes in a reloading program has got to be done diligently. And, um, you know, he's got to get through every stage. So just at the moment, he's not quite there, but he's not too far away. On the contrary, like Luke was, was doing everything. Is, is he a, a walk-up start? Yeah, look, he's got to tick through a few more things, but he was doing everything today and he looks really promising. Um, we haven't made a decision on that yet, but, you know, everything at the moment is looking like he'll get through um, and then that'll give us some selection headaches. So um, it is competitive for spots, um, but we'll have to make some decisions. Yeah, I, I guess you touched on it a little bit, Simon. Um, the, the balance of the team and the amount of options that you have, as promising as Luke has been this season, I, I guess it means he doesn't necessarily walk back in. I think that's for all of our tools. I think at the moment it is competitive for spots. Um, they're all performing strongly, so that gives us some real challenges, but one that we uh, look forward to and want to thrive in. Are you happy with how the um, Sam Wiedemann and Ben Brown combination worked last week, although they both failed to hit the scoreboard? I think they were both really competitive, um, which was pleasing for us. Um, our ground level pressure was still really strong, so. And we think the combination works well for us. We want to keep persevering with all those options that we've got. Um, and eventually we'll find some cohesion. Simon, if you, look, if you do bring Luke back in, not to ask who to go out, but I guess in regards to Sam, given he's only come back and played a week, would it be ideal for him at least to, I guess, to not be sort of one in, one out and get a bit more of a, a crack at it? Yeah, you're trying to get an answer out of me, aren't you, about what we're going to do? Um, I'm not going to give that today. Um, Sam's a really important player to us. We thought he competed really strongly for us, um, as we thought Ben did, um, and we do think Luke does as well. So um, we've got some delicate decisions to make. They're not easy decisions. It is competitive for spots, but we've got a mature group. They understand where that sits, and um, every single one of those guys wants to work hard at their game and get better, and um, you know they want to continue to improve. So they're going to keep pushing each other, and we're going to keep picking the team that we think is going to be best to suit that week and, and the opposition we play and the, the team that's going to score the most. How posit positive for you is it, Simon, that you have to have these conversations and make these tough decisions? Because really, it's a positive, isn't it? Oh, it's a great position as a coach to be in, um, to have a group of tall forwards that are all vying for the same spot. They're all competing really strongly with each other and they're working with each other, to be honest. Um, this is a team sport. Um, and they want to operate well together. So um, it's a great position for us as a coaching group to be in. It's, it's tough because you've got to make some tough decisions and have some tough conversations. Um, but it's all about getting better and improving and making the team successful. And um, when we're in that position, we're in a good space. So um, I'm excited by the opportunity that presents for us because all those guys haven't played a lot of footy together. So the more cohesion that we build together, um, the better it will be. Did you feel like you, you missed much in the centre square without Luke when Max was resting? No, nah, look, I thought Sam Wiedemann was really strong in the centre square. You know, I thought he competed really strongly. Um, clearly Luke's an out-and-out um, really good second ruck. You know, he, he can change momentum in games. So, um, you know, he's a really important player to us and, you know, developing really well. But we didn't think we lost much with Sam doing the second ruck as well. You know, he, he contributed really strongly in that phase of the game. You're really pressing to get an answer out of me today, yeah. <laughs> what does 10 in a row potentially mean to Simon? Oh, it doesn't mean a lot in terms of, um, you know, where we are. We want to keep resetting. We want to keep winning. I think the thing for me is that as a group, they've been fantastic at resetting and 
and just playing each game on its merits and wanting to get better. And what we've developed within our footy club is a lot of competition, not only for spots, but com competitiveness in how we play and rocking up and doing the same things week after week. And um, that's the challenge for us again this week. We play a footy team in Adelaide that you know, are playing some reasonable football. Um, they haven't had the results that they're looking for, um, but they're playing highly competitive, contested footy um, that's hard to beat. So we're looking forward to another, another challenge, uh, a game away from home in a pretty hostile environment. Simon, does the, the start you've had, I mean, maybe open the season up to you in the sense of, I mean, having luxury of potentially giving guys a rest as we, as we go on because you've got that buffer? Like, have you rethought how you attack the, you know, the second half of the, the season at all? We haven't thought about that at all yet. Um, our biggest thought at the moment is how we get better and improve as a team. Um, what it does enable you to do is to make smart decisions. Um, but we're certainly not going about resting players or managing a group of players or anything like that. We want to continue to refine our game, continue to build cohesion and continue to get better. And um, that's the way we're looking at it as coaches. And um, you know, if we're in a position later in the year where we get a, a different look at things, we'll make some different decisions. But right now, our focus is purely on getting better and, and improving our game. Simon, I may have missed the first one or two questions, but have you got an update on Jack Viney? Yeah, Jack's still recovering from his bone stress. Um, he's reloading that injury, um, obviously, really di diligently. Um, but it's a week-by-week -week proposition. You know, he won't play this week. Um, you know, he's a chance to get up for next week, but he's got to make sure every stage he gets through is really important. And when you're reloading a bone um, in the foot, it's important that you do it um, cautiously. Um, and if he gets through those steps, he'll become available. But whether it's uh, another week or whether it's another two or three, we're just going to you know, treat every session as that sort of importance and he's got to get through those boxes. So um, we'll just wait and see on that one. And th through the VFL, you'd imagine, or assess you know, when the time comes? Yeah, we'll just assess that when the time comes. Depends how many weeks he ends up missing. Um, at the moment, it's two. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see on that. We'll, uh, we'll assess that when it comes. How's Nathan's hammy, sorry, but Nathan Jones available this weekend? Yeah, Nathan Jones, that was a real positive out last week. He came off the track with some hamstring tightness, got scanned, and it was just really, really, really minor. Um, you know, he ran on the weekend, got through everything, and, and trained fully today. So, um, yeah, he'll be available. He'll play some VFL footy on Sunday. What does he need to do, Simon, to sort of play a role for you for the rest of the season? I think one of the strengths of Nathan is he brings versatility to our team. So, um, you know, he can play a number of different roles, um, whether that be wing inside or, or, or half forward. Um, at the moment, it's just highly competitive for outright spots in, in those positions. So he's competing against some guys who are in some really good form and also some guys that are, are playing really strong footy in the team at the moment. So, um, you know, his challenge at the moment is to go back to VFL footy, play some really strong footy, primarily through the midfield and forward and um, see if he can earn his spot back. Not to, to denigrate Nathan's role at all if he's not getting picked in the 22. Is there a lot of value in having him potentially as the medical sub because he's going to be down on the bench and, and interacting? Yeah, look, we've spoken to Nathan about that. You know, we see the medical sub as something that's really important to us from a whole range of different reasons, versatility being one of those, but also the ability to impact your teammates and have a, um, an influence away, off, off the field as well. So Nathan's really clear and, and committed to helping the team in whatever that looks like, whether it be medical sub, whether it be through the VFL, whether it be through some coaching and, and mentoring of younger players. And, um, you know, he's been fantastic in that this year and, and he'll continue to do that. Simon, could you elaborate a bit on the culture that um, I guess the club is trying to build um, and I guess it's driven by the players, right? But it, it hasn't really been something that we've seen from the footy club, you know, over the last five, ten years, mainly because of ladder position and stuff. But the, the switch in the last year or two and the culture that you guys are trying to create... Yeah, look, I think culture is one of those words that gets bandied around and it really only gets any sort of recognition when uh, you start winning or you start having a little bit of success. And um, there's no doubt the players are really brought into what they want to drive and, and how they want to go about it and, then, and be really consistent with it, whether you are getting results or are there are instances where um, they can either reward behaviour or um, 
you know, change what it looks like and, and challenge behaviour. So our players have been really strong in that. Respect's been a big one of that. I, I assume you're talking about Milkshake Gate. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, no, well, I mean, you, you brought it up and I wasn't going to highlight it. Yeah. But, you know, the, there's small things from, yeah. from example like that to other things like Cozzy Pickett, you know, and, and pointing at the score. But I know that was addressed, you know, in yeah. small ways. But those kind of things seem to be addressed by you guys or the players to address it, move on. And I guess that's what builds your culture, right? Yeah, look, I think there's, there's ways you can do about doing things. You can either reward behaviour, which we do a lot, you know, when we see things we like or actions we like on field or off field, we reward and recognise. I um, mean, there's things that need to be addressed and um, our players have been brilliant. Given the, the crane or the goey thing and that, you know, and essentially you guys are just trying to celebrate Kay getting his first win, you know, when he's on the field and playing, and do, we, do we need to apologise for for these things that are supposed to be just between players? Uh, I'm not apologising one bit for our players addressing um, the milkshake um, incident at all. What I'm saying is I, I think it's a great thing for our players to to pull that action up and um, I think the vision was more around track washing him down and the care and unity around washing him down. So, um, yeah, I'm certainly not challenging the guys in the, in the, in the change rooms for sure at all.